Hello, Ass Lounge. Welcome to week 11. Thank you for having me. I'm an esteemed, honored week 10 dumpster. And here I am on paternity leave. I could think of nothing better to do than to put together a boatload of content for the league. As you can see, I have a, a guest joining me here. Can't guarantee her behavior will comply with our employer's rules, but we're gonna get going. Um, yes, that's a good point. There you go. Now let's get to the first segment. What do you say? All right. So I put together a couple of uh, fun nuggets for everybody. And we're gonna start with, let me share my screen. Sorry, one second. We are going to start with a concept that everybody's familiar with, which is our expected wins and losses, right? So we take the average points scored by every team every week, and we say fairly rudimentary approximation. If you scored above the, the weekly average in a week, you get a win expected. And if you scored below, you get a expected loss, right? So that's what we have on this left side. We have the standings based on the difference between actual wins in this column and the expected wins. So how many times did you eclipse the 114.1 mark that's shown here? And how many wins do you actually have? And this is sorted again by outperformance in actuality relative to what we'd expect. And it should be of no surprise to anyone that our most fortunate manager to date is the Bingos, who have five more actual wins than expectations. It's also worth highlighting that on the other end of the spectrum, we have our friend the Buckets, who have four fewer wins in actuality than what they should expect, given their number of times eclipsing 114.1. So thought that was interesting. The other thing worth highlighting is if we take this same metric, but using points allowed, we see the number of times that your opponent scored more than 114.1. Uh-oh. Number of times your opponent scored more than 114.1 should be viewed. Hold on one second. All right, sorry about that. My co-star's contract expired, so I'll be handling the rest of the show by myself. Let's go back to our expected wins based on points against. So again, compared to 114.1, based on your points against in a given week, you can see here that we're sorting by those who have more actual wins than expected based on their points against. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, right? What this is telling us is that Josh has been scored on three more times above 114.1 um, than we'd expect for him to win, right? So basically, we only expect him to have six wins because of how many times he's been scored on above the average, but he has actual, actually nine wins. So his strength of record is, is quite strong. Those that have floated to the top here have more wins than we would expect based on the higher uh, points against that they have. So just some food for thought. I think it was interesting on this side, probably more so with the, the extreme outliers here in, in the bingos and in uh, the buckets. All right, next, I wanna take a quick look at the streaks that we have going on. So you know, a little play here. This is Bingo. Bingo is going streaking. As everyone knows, Bingo is on a seven week win streak currently. So I've taken a look into the league history books at our longest streaks. And you can see right here, the longest streaks in league history are actually 10 weeks in a row, uh, 2014 and 2010. Rivas and Mike each had 10 week streaks. So Rivas is not quite into uh, all-time great streak just yet. 
Uh, but I thought it would also be interesting to, interesting to compare what those streaks look like in, as far as output relative to this one. So what I did is for each of those years, I looked at what the league week, weekly average was, and that's in this column F. And then I compared during the streak, which is here, this is the streak points for average and the streak points against average. During that streak, how much higher was that individual's points for than the league average throughout the streak? And how much lower was their points against average during the streak, right? So for instance, 2014, the bingos average 117 points per week. That's an exceptional streak because we didn't have a PPR or a second flex. The league average at the time was 93 points. So his points for was 26% higher than the league average at that point in time, which is amazing. Um, and then I did the same for the points against. So I, during that frame, he was also uh, conceding at a very low rate, 18% below what the league average was during that time. So it was kind of a perfect storm for him in 2014. That's how you read this. Now, the, the interesting thing here, and you can see our current active streak is in row eight. It's highlighted. The interesting thing is this number right here. This is the only streak of seven weeks or longer in league history where the scoring average for this team is lower than 8% above league average, which was the 2010 uh, Dixon Noses team. In fact, this is the only one in history where we see the average scoring for the team below the league average during that length of a span. So uh, we're in uncharted waters here. It will be really interesting if we see that streak continue uh, for an eighth week, uh, and I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to show is just the point average deficit. So how much lower than league average was his opponent's average during that time? You can see prior to this current streak, the record uh, was for that Dixon Noses team, 20% on average below the league average for the year um, during that streak of 10 weeks. This one is actually trending more negative than that, right? So this is the all-time largest deficit to the average points allowed in a given seven-week streak in league history. So we have a kind of a combination of two historical outliers here going for the bingos. Uh, but as he says, beat what's in front of you. He's doing it. You can't, uh, you can't take that away from him. So uh, more power to you. Now let's move into the meat of the write-up, which is going to come in a bit of a Vegas theme. So let's take a flight out to Vegas. Yep, you guys know this show. All right. And you can see here, in front of you, I have the Bob Ross sports book. You can see on the left side, odds for every team to win the coveted 2021 championship win the playoffs. And on the right side, we have our matchups. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through the matchups here, just one by one, make my picks and give you reasoning for why. And then we'll spend the last like minute or so going through the Super Bowl odds and, and how I kind of backed into those. And then I'll also leave these up on the screen so you can hate on your odds, um, especially those of you who suck, which is most of you. Um, so anyways, Let's take a look real quick at our standings, where things stand right now. Um, you know, as you guys know, the top six records are what's going to get you to playoffs. The next two best points four are what's going to get you at the wild card spots, right? And so if we sort by points four here, we look at the top six records. The Suns are currently occupying that last auto bid. Um, and that's based on a tie break of points four with, with the Shaps, which is only a margin of 10. So right now, a bunch of teams clustered at five and five. We have Rippy at four and six. Everybody's kind of in the mix for that last playoff spot. And in fact, you know, four nights in Tulum and also get buckets still in the mix. We still have four weeks left. It's a longer season than normal. Um, and I also want to just kind of note, you know, that we are looking at you know, a potential four-way race for those wildcard spots. Um, the reason being that Popcorn Sutton, who is currently up in fourth place, 
scumbag popcorn, I should say, is really on the decline, right? And uh, he won't admit to it, but if you look at where he stands right now, he is currently sitting in fifth, slowly creeping his way down the leaderboard in points. He was up in second three weeks ago, third two weeks ago. Last week, I think he was right around where the sacks are. So maybe right around third or fourth and now dropped to fifth. If his current slide continues and his record stays where it is, he's not going to get an auto bid, right? He has six wins, which is pretty clutch. He basically needs to go two and two from here on out. If he doesn't, things could get really interesting. We could see Scumbag drop out of the playoffs. We could see somebody like Shaps taking one of those spots. And then it's going to be a matter of maybe the trailers, maybe the buckets, or maybe even Trebek Titans getting in based on their points. So it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. Uh, but let's go to the matchups for the week. We are going to start with nobody other than Scumbag Popcorn. So if you look uh, back at our uh, sports book, you can see that this is a pretty heavy favorite uh, for Josh. So pretty, pretty strong line in Josh's favor. He's favored by about 21.7. Um, and, you know, to be quite honest, I, I don't see Josh having any issues with this, right? He, for the most part, has a healthy lineup. He doesn't have his Rams this week. Cooper Cup's out. Um, and Cooper Cup has been absolutely exceptional. You know, the, he, he's basically two wide receiver ones built into the same person. Um, so he's missing that main kind of piece. But the rest of his team has been exceptionally strong. You got Harris. You got Fournette. Uh, Cooks has been good. Jamar Chase, Kelsey. There's not many holes here, even with Cup on the bench. Uh, on the other side of the equation, you have Scumbag Popcorn, who we talked about his current slide. I think it's really worth highlighting that until Kareem Hunt comes back, his running back situation is pretty brutal. Um, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire obviously been getting a lot of chatter in the in the group chat right now. He's still currently on IR. May play this week. Maybe not. Even if he does. To Bingo's point, you know, he could be in some sort of a timeshare for the uh, at least immediate future, and, and who knows what happens after that. But then you look even further down the line, right? He's got Tyreek Hill, which we know, you know, is, is a known entity, one of the top receivers in the league. But then after that, he's got some wide receiver two slash flex guys who could have, you know, potentially good weeks. Christian Kirk is having a, a sneaky good year. Tyler Boyd was a trash pickup. Um, I don't really see much going on there. And then Michael Gallup. Now, I think the Cowboys offense is strong. I think Gallup could be a good third option, but I just don't see this lineup doing much um, it, when it really needs to. He's going to need Josh Allen to really carry this team. So I think Josh wins this matchup, and I think he covers the spread, even though the, it's as large as it is, 21.7. I have Josh winning this by 30. Let's go to the next matchup. Um, as you can see back in the sports book, the Bing Bros and the Suns. This is one. This one is a little tougher because we have some, uh, I think, to be determined roster changes that need to happen. So I left this as a pick 'em in the sports book. You can see that it's it's technically a six point five point spread, but uh, the Suns have two Broncos on by in uh, Melvin Gordon in the defense, and the Bingos don't have a tight end plugged in. I'm assuming they will plug in their newly acquired. Uh, Tyler Higby, oh wait, he's on by. Oops, that was a mistake. Okay, so you still need to go pick up yet another tight end. That'll be a, a fun Friday pickup, or you can hit me up. Darren Waller is for sale. Anyways, let's go back to the, the meat of the matchup, right? So we got a couple of questionable guys who are going to make a big impact on whether or not their team wins. And, and first and foremost, obviously, the Ravens stack on the Sun side. We got Lamar questionable. I don't think he practiced today. Hollywood also questionable. Um, if those guys don't play, you can just close this one out uh, and give Bingo his eighth win on the spin, probably yet another uh, win with his opponent scoring less than 90 points. If those guys do play and Miz picks uh, or puts in his new pickup, Boston Scott, probably good for five points and plugs in in the defense, you know, some streamer can probably ex expect his projection to grow by maybe seven or eight points. Let's call it 106, 107. Bingo probably throws in a five point streamer tight end, makes it like 108, 109, 110. 
probably looking at a, a projected outcome in the 105 to 110 range for both teams. So I probably make this sort of somewhat of a toss up. I'll be honest. I think Cam Newton, not a good pickup. Um, really. I think this is too soon. I think you need to give him a little more time to show what he's got. I don't think Cordell Patterson is going to play tonight. If he does, I think he's going to be limited. I do think Deontay Foreman is a, a good potential upside play against Houston as much as I like to shit on him in the chat because it's fun. Um, and I think having Gibson and Collins in your flexes is, is a good thing. The Miz three tight end stack, uh, while it's going to get constant uh, backlash in the chat, I don't hate it. I think Kittle is a top three tight end. I think Ertz in Arizona is much better than Ertz in Philadelphia. And I think Dan Arnold is a sneaky, solid, you know, top eight or, or 10 uh, tight end option um, in a Jacksonville offense that, I mean, it's going to be playing from behind on a regular basis. That said, you know, I think that uh, the bingo spin continues. I have him winning this one 102 to 91. So I think uh, he covers a spread and I think he wins yet again as a result of uh, poor opponent performance. All right, next one up. We have the trailers and the sacks. We have the sacks favored by about five. Um, I think this is a potential for game of the week. And the reason for that is that both of these teams have a lot of talent. I think Bardelli's team is actually one of the best teams on paper rest of the way. And I reflected that in my uh, Super Bowl odds, which you can see here. He's actually the third favored team to make the to win to win it all at plus six hundred. Right. Um, this week, you know, he's, he's not really missing any huge pieces. He's not starting Mike Davis ever. Uh, Dearness Johnson, you know, may or may not start. And we'll see where that goes if, if Chubb is able to come back. But Bardelli's team is pretty healthy at this point. And I think that he's in pretty good position uh, to put up some points this week. And if we look on the other side of the spectrum, you know, Rippy's team has a couple of areas, I think, that need some work. Devontae Freeman, you don't want to be starting him. Um, I'm glad to see that you finally got rid of Jameis Winston this week. Took long enough. He's been on IR for a long time, and I don't think anybody expected you to keep him. Uh, plugging in Ravens D this week, interesting move against Chicago. Could could pan out. I mean, you're you're just, you're benching the number one defense. Um, we'll see what where that ends up going. Ultimately, I think that Bardelli pulls this one off. I think he covers the five point spread. I think he wins this one by uh, maybe twelve. Next matchup, we have Triforce against Four Knights in Tulum. Looking at uh, the Triforce roster, you know, I mentioned this last week. They're they're probably as healthy as they've been in uh, probably you know since week one. So it's good to see that they have a couple guys who've been out for such a long time that they're not gonna that they're finally getting back. Assuming Chubb plays, if Chubb doesn't play this week, so this is out right now. Um, this could be another long one for them. Fortunately for for the Triforce Bros, they're also going to be up against a, a very poor opponent. So last week I clearly put up a, a, a very limited effort against them. I don't see Troy uh, mustering up much more. He, he does have AJ Dillon, which could be a big boost this week with Aaron Jones out. Um, but I wouldn't recommend starting AJ Green. No Daryl Henderson. I'm a big Daryl Henderson guy. So that you know that's too bad. Uh, ultimately, I think this is going to just come down to which guy's studs perform better. So it's really going to be about if Dak can get in a shootout in Kansas City and if McCaffrey can run wild against the, the football team. Um, I think the Dolphins pickup was a shrewd one by Triforce. They, they spent some money on that, but I think it's going to pay dividends. Uh, and I think that uh, ultimately they're going to come out on top here. I have them winning this one by six points. Uh, in a, a surprisingly lofty projection matchup for our two lowest scoring, two of our lower scoring teams in the league, 119 to 116. All right, next one, we have Shaps versus the Buckets. Um, I got to be honest, I think Mike's team is better than what their record indicates. And I've, indi uh, you know, I mentioned that, I showed that in the data before. Um, I think getting back Russell Wilson is critical for this team, not just as a quarterback, but also for Lockett. I think Lockett is basically, you know, like a outside the top 40 with Geno Smith under center. So this is a big, a big uh, get for him. Um, it'll be interesting to see what he does here with Elijah Moore, because ha not having Aaron Jones this week or Cortland Sutton as options for uh, you know, that sort of fourth position the flex the second flex position is a tough 
break. Um, Antonio Brown, if he's back, could be a good plug-in play there. Otherwise, he's working uh, with a with a trash pickup. Who knows what's going to happen? Good thing for him, he has a Niners defense against a really poor Jags offense. Uh, but if we look on the other side of the equation, I think Benoit has some pretty solid matchups. He's got Aaron Rodgers against Minnesota. I think Rodgers usually plays pretty well against divisional opponents. He's got Zeke against the Chiefs, who are terrible on defense. Ingram, you know, if, if Kamara doesn't play this week, I think Ingram could be a top 20, uh, top 15, I mean, running back. If Kamara does play this week, maybe Ingram gets into the end zone. I don't know if Hopkins is going to play this week. If he does, plug him in. He's a, a wide receiver one. Um, we'll see what happens with Fryer, Fryer Muth, Fire Muff, uh, Fire Crotch. He... <laughs> He's been scoring touchdowns. Uh, and then we have Keenan Allen and Cole Beasley. Patriots D has a really good matchup. I, th I think that this one could go either way. Ultimately, I think I like uh, Mike's side of the equation. He's just got a couple more pieces, I think, that have a little more upside. Some of his matchups are decent. I think the Seahawks have a good week against Arizona. And I think that, um, you know, ultimately the, the, the Jonathan Taylor – Mike Williams combination will bring him to the promised land. So I got Mike winning this one. It's a small spread. I think it's going to be a tight matchup. I think he covers because it's such a small spread. I think he wins by five. And let's go to finally to my matchup with Brent. I'm slightly favored here. This is the highest combined implied total on the week. You can see here 131.2 to 123.1. It's 254 points they think are going to be scored here. There's some question marks on both sides. Saquon and, and Robinson are obviously critical ones for, for Brent. And then Kyler and Kamara, they don't play. You know, I'm going to be facing uh, an uphill battle again, like what I saw last week. Good thing is that I have Burrow on the bench just in case, and I can always move Connor up into my running back one slot. I'm getting David Montgomery back, which is going to be huge. And people love Gaskin this week. Um, he's, he's really – Looking at a really lofty projection, as I said earlier, 14 points. I'll take the under all day on that one. Um, I think I'd beat Brent this week, Todd. And I do think that Brent's team, I think they're also better than their record. Um, if they're healthy, I think they, you know, they don't have many holes. I think Waddle's a good player for down the stretch for a run. I think the Titans defense, underrated, could be good. I think Justin Jefferson is a good buy low guy right now. And, uh, you know, if, I don't know what Pitts is going to do tonight, as we've said earlier. Belichick likes to take away the team, the other team's best weapon. Um, I think that's Pitts. I think that Pitts is going to have pretty strong coverage on him tonight, uh, but we'll see what happens. That said, I think I can beat Brent this week. I think I, I do not cover the spread, and I eke out a six-point victory um, to move to a solid six and five on the year. All right, let's go back one last time to wrap this up with our – Super Bowl championship odds, right? So I just want to give all you guys a, a quick tutorial on how to read this. Our favorite here is a crab cake football team at plus 180. What this means is if you were to bet $100, you would win in profit $180. So that would be your winnings and you'd get back your $100 bet. So um, Josh, the heavy favorite here, the implied probability with a plus 180 is roughly 35%. Um, so I think Josh has about a little better than a one in three chance of winning at all. His team is stacked top to bottom. He's got depth. And I think just in general, you know, it's going to be tough for, for somebody to beat him, um, unless his team has a dud like they did last week. That was a prime time to, to beat Josh. Um, next I have myself, so maybe I'm overrating myself. I, I think when my team's healthy, we can compete with anybody. I'm at plus 500. So five to one odds. Um, you know, again, I think that my, my squad is, is built uh, with minimal holes, but I do think that Josh's t talent is just higher. Um, the sacks next plus 600, that's six to one. I, I mentioned it before. I think they have a really strong lineup. I think that they have a couple guys who they picked up off the waiver wire. Um, Stevenson, uh, we have a couple other guys here. Let me just pull up their roster really quick. Stevenson, um, Renfro obviously is another big one. And then Jeff Wilson Jr., who knows what's going to happen with him. He could end up falling into a starting role. Um, so I think that this team is, is poised and built. You know, if Debo keeps playing the way he's playing, six to one is pretty fair. Buckets at 10 to one. This one was a tougher one for me because the buckets are currently not in the playoff picture um, aside from their wild card stance. So if they don't put some wins together, we're going to just be relying on them to make the playoffs through keeping their points for high, uh, which they've done a reasonably 
decent job with. They've had a couple of tough weeks recently, but now that Wilson's back, I think they're in good shape. And I think when that team is fully healthy, they're top four team in the league. So I have them here at 10 to one. Um, you might want to sell those odds. That's where I put them. The Suns, 15 to one. Um, I went through it with the Hollywood Brown Lamar stack. I think they can compete with anybody if those guys score 70 or 80 points in a week like they did against me earlier this year. Trebek at 20 to one. I just went through, you know, I think they have a pretty solid roster. I think they need to get healthy, but if they make the playoffs, they can beat anybody on any given week. They, you know, the Brenton has a couple of thunders this year, a couple of dumpsters, a couple of thunders. And I think that's going to be it. Um, the trailers at 30 to one, you know, I've been lower on this team than I think Troy has for certain, for certain during his weekly uh, power ranks. But, um, you know, I think the talent definitely is there. If, if Diggs can turn things around, continue the way he's been trending, if Eckler can keep things going the way that they've been going, I think that this team could make some noise if they can get into the playoffs. So let's say they sneak in as the eight seed, not the easiest eight seed uh, for a team like Josh in the first round. If some of those studs have a big game, the next team I have in here, number eight, is the Bing Bros at 35 to one. Now, I wanted to put this team outside the top eight in terms of odds because I think that this team has virtually no chance of winning the Super Bowl. Um, again, you know, they're bottom three in points. They've just been getting what has amounted to historically uh, favorable schedule, and it's resulted in a seven week run. Now, again, credit to Bingo. He's beating what's in front of him, but when it comes to the playoffs, I just don't see this being sustainable. Um, assuming he makes the playoffs, it's not going to happen through wild card. He's going to need to win another game, maybe two more, depending on tie breaks. Um, I've had him at 35 to one, assuming he gets in. So he's the eighth place team here. Scumbag popcorn at 36 to one. This might be too low. Um, but you know, given that Henry's out, I don't know what Kareem Hunt's situation is. I put him right around the bingo situation, right? So I'm assuming he's going to make the playoffs with six wins. Uh, but if he doesn't, you know, this is a long shot. And if he does, he's got some major holes in his roster. So it would be a really long shot for, for them to win it all. Shaps, 45 to one. This might be too harsh. If they can make the playoffs, you know, they have a couple pieces. They just don't have a ton of pop. And that's why I put them at 45 to one. Um, could be good value here. Triforce documented, they have some big studs. They're facing injuries on a regular basis, but I just don't see them getting in. Lowest, uh, maybe bottom two in points. Their record is not going to get them in. They're going to need to do a lot of work in the next four weeks, which is why they're down here at 80 to one, just because it's going to be tough for them to make the dance. And then lastly, four nights in Tulum, bringing up the rear, 100 to one. This is a long shot bet. You can really make some serious money if you put a couple of shekels down on this one. Um, if you can, if you can make the playoffs, Troy, uh, God bless you. Good luck. I hope you beat Josh in the first round. Anyways, that's going to do it for me. Uh, I've overstayed my welcome here. Thank you guys again for listening. and uh, Good luck this week. See ya.